Okay, hello everybody, it's Kirsty Hogg from Gold Wars, and today I will be speaking to a man who got into silver at the tender age of 11 years old and started um, getting interested in silver and was actually investing in stocks as a teenager. And he went on to um, getting degrees in economics, finance, and engineering. And he ended up launching a career in the silver industry. And he's now known as the Silver Guru. And he is the founder of SilverInvestor.com and the publisher of the Morgan Report. So welcome, David Morgan. Well, thank you, Kirsty. It's great to be with you. Great to talk to you. Um, I guess my audience would be interested in finding out what drew you to the world of precious metals at such a young age. Well, it's in my book, and briefly, the currency changed when I was about 11 years old from being 90% silver coins to what we call cupro nickel coins, which are basically a copper coin with a nickel clad on top, and they had a a different sound and a different makeup and they weren't the same but they were the same size and they had the same stamp from the government and when that took place uh, I you know reasoned as an 11 year old that uh, the silver coins had to be more valuable than these cupro nickel clad coins were and obviously the public that knew or understood what was happening quickly took all the silver out of circulation and of course only the bad coin circulated which of course is Gresham's law and I was really too young to understand exactly what was happening but uh, I guess it sparked an interest in me and then and then later on I started learning uh, you know civics or government uh, classes in the public school system and it talked about you know what the Constitution said regarding money and of course I'm questioning that you know well wait a minute doesn't it say that uh, you know the coinage act of 1792 which is not in the Constitution but after the Constitution was ratified that you know we're gonna have a silver standard and I went on of course the teacher really couldn't couldn't answer my questions so I sort of had this desire to understand money and finance at a pretty early age and as I got older, I became a student of, of money, really, and finance, but particularly the monetary question. And so I started reading stuff in that arena from uh, probably 16, 17, 18, in, that, you know, in those years, and continued to this day, and learning about monetary history. So, you know, just sparked by, I guess, you know, careful or not careful, well, careful observation of what was taking place and did it or did it not have any consequences. So by the time we left the gold standard in 1971, which was, uh, you know, several years later, seven years or whatever it is, I thought, um, mm -hmm. so I had, you know, by that time studied, uh, you know, quite a bit and realized that now we really have a problem because uh, the international contract with all other nation states on a global basis has been uh, thrown in the trash can as a metaphor. They just basically ripped it up and said, we're not honoring the contract anymore. No longer is the dollar as good as gold. It's as good as we say it is. And of course, if you believe what I believe, that's been the basic start of the unwinding uh, into with the global financial morass that we're in currently. Interesting. Very good answer. And for the people who are out there who, you know, a lot of people just will say, I'm really interested in gold, I, I watch gold, I, I use it as a hedge for inflation, but, you know, I'm not really certain about this silver thing. I, I, there's no evidence out there with the supply-demand um, fundamentals that people are preaching these days. What would, you, what would you say to somebody who is skeptical about Silver's uh, eminent. Well, my answer to that is pretty simple, and it's really not my answer. One is, if you look at the facts, gold and silver track each other with about an 84% correlation. So during this last amount of time we've had uh, from the beginning of the bull market, from roughly the year 2000, 12 years of a bull market in gold and at least 10 in silver. What we have seen is that, you know, we've had these deflationary scares and inflationary scares a couple of times, and both metals have tracked each other pretty darn close. So that right there is a fact that you can't make the inflation-deflation argument too strong with silver uh, not corresponding and doing what gold does, but it does it in a more vigorous manner. 
because silver is a smaller market. So the ups are higher and the downs are lower, but nonetheless attract each other. The second point I would make is that Professor Roy S. Jastrom wrote a book after he wrote the Golden Concert, excuse me, Golden Constant, and it was called Silver the Restless Metal. And in that book, his conclusion that was that silver, not gold, was the best against an inflationary depression of anything that you could get. He felt, well, he, his study proved that silver was absolutely the best. Now, that presupposes that we're going into a inflationary depression and doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to happen. We could go into a deflationary depression. I'm not absolutely convinced that it'll be a, an inflationary one, although all the trends point to that direction currently. We were actually speaking with each other at the Vancouver conference, and I had asked you about the huge upside in gold, uh, that big spike that we had last Friday, just a week ago. And you, you said that you wanted to see a couple more days of trading, you see how that settled. And so I just wanted to follow up with you and ask you, um, what do you think is going on now? What, what's, what do you think the temperature is out there with gold and silver? Well, I still think the bottom could be in, although I am looking for a low this month, and we're not even, you know, a week into June or a little beyond that. Uh, I like the way it traded, uh, you know, Monday and Tuesday, but not sufficient enough to give me an all-in or, or a trading position, although I did put on a trade that's pretty safe. I didn't like what happened after the Bernanke speech, and gold and silver basically got clobbered and were back to where they were before the big spike up. But that's this market. It's highly volatile, and it's uh, is manipulated at times, and I think more frequently now than we've seen in the past. Although you know, there's no way I mean to to really analyze that uh, in a very accurate manner. I don't want to misspeak this. I mean, Adrian Douglas has done a superb job on analyzing it almost on a daily basis. Regardless, the point being that we're still finding a bottom in here, I believe, but fundamentally. There's never been a better time to be in the metals than there is right now. Fundamentally, things are at a point where if you understand finance, you understand the economic situation, you understand the debt problem, you understand what's going on in Europe, you understand what happens to all fiat currencies. If you have any understanding in any of those areas, then you will understand the need to be in the precious metals. And if you don't, then I suggest you get on blogs like yours, Kirsty and get educated because this is your future. You know, I want to talk a bit, I'm going to digress a moment about money. And money for most people represents security. Most people seek to have a constant in their lives. They want some stability. They want something that no matter what happens, they can touch and that is something solid that they can rely on and it's a constant for forever, in other words, for their entire lives. And one thing we know as human beings is the only constant we have is change. Things change. We age. Uh, you know, we live in different places. Our jobs change. Our kids grow up. I mean, on and on it goes. The one thing that gold and silver provide is a constant. I mean, an ounce of gold or an ounce of silver is a constant always and everywhere. What changes, of course, is the price. But it does offer some stability, especially in the financial market. So going back to money, and I digress from that digression was that people seek security. And this is a very insecure world right now, not only on the, on the war front, but on the food front, and the water front, and the energy front, and most importantly, on the political and economic fronts. So the safety, again, is something that you can't be guaranteed. But seeking safety, most people look at money. If I had enough money, I would feel secure. But they're looking at it in the wrong way. They're looking at money as security, which historically is somewhat valid, but they're looking for if I only had this much quote unquote money and they give it an amount, a dollars or Canadian dollars or Australian dollars or euros or whatever. And that's the wrong way to think about it in today's world. The best way to think about it in today's world is a, as a consequence of wealth, which means you need to save in real money, which means gold and silver. Excellent. And a popular question I'm often asked is how much gold and silver should somebody buy and should they buy it physical should they take delivery on it what's your opinion on that well first of all as you know one of the free market uh, big advocates I would say it's an individual choice but as a minimum I would say 10 percent I think in today's world that uh, you should have a 10 percent backing 
and put yourself on your own gold and silver standard by having you know 10% of your liquid net worth in the metals physically. If that is the case, then uh, I think no matter what happens out there, uh, you'd probably be at least protected. Uh, this was the case in the, in the 1970s bull market that ran through January 21st, 1980. That gold run was a good, uh, oh, depends where you start it, but you know, from the early 70s where Americans were allowed to own gold and it was uh, cut from the um, gold window that I mentioned a moment ago. And you, Americans could buy gold again. It went from that 42.22 price all the way up to 850. So you made you know over 20 times on your money. And so if you had 10% of your assets at the bottom, and I'm not saying too many did, but if you did, you would have made 20 times on your money. So even if you caught gold at like the hundred dollar level, uh, you still could have made roughly eight to 10 times on your money. And if everything else went to zero, and it didn't. But if everything else went to zero, just that 10% hedge would have made up for everything else in your portfolio. So that I think is good. You know, people argue with me, why wouldn't you have 100% in the metals? And you know, this, you know, the other end of the argument. And again, I'm free market. If you, if that's right for you, that's right for you. It's not right for everybody. I think energy is a good place to be invested in. I think water and food is a good place to be invested in. And a lot of my clientele are business owners, small business owners. And so. You know, there's nothing, in my view, more important than investing in yourself. I mean, you know, if you've got a dream and you want to build a business or you want to put your kids through school or, you know, whatever, there's, there's other things to life than investing. So I, like, I advocate that you find out what's right for you and invest accordingly. I can certainly agree with you there. Um, and finally, you know, this is a, a very popular question I'm sure you're asked often. What do you think the price of silver will be, let's say, in 2013? What can we look forward to there? Okay, well, these are these guessing games that I get asked quite a bit, and I really don't mind playing them. What I do have a bit of a problem with is I'm only human, and people take what I do very seriously because I'm very serious about the work we do here at the Morgan Report. But I had said very early in the year I thought we could see 60 in 2012, and I've backed off from that for the last several months because this economic decline slash depre depression or deflationary scare or whatever you want to refer to it as has continued. And the last announcement by the Fed just a couple of days ago was that uh, they are not advocating a QE3 or a lucid monetary policy, at least officially, right now. So there's still deflationary forces that are perceived to be out there. So I'm looking for a rebound of bottom of the metals very soon and a rebound up to probably the $40 level in silver and probably the $1,800 level in gold by the end of 2012. For 2013, as you asked me, I think that's a tr uh, the year that we start to really start to build more momentum. And I'm looking for 2013 for silver to take out the old nominal high, which was roughly $50 an ounce and go further than that and gold to establish a new high above the $1,900 level that it has been to so far, which also is a nominal high. Uh, it's act, Well, it's a nominal new high. It's not an inflation-adjusted new high. So on an inflation-adjusted basis, it should be at least 2500 to match the high it was in 1980. So I'm looking for much higher metal prices in 2013. I'm not going to give you an exact number because I'm going to wait until the end of the year to see if I'm even right about gold and silver prices at that point in time. Okay, great. Um, it's been a pleasure. And uh, where can we find you, and where can one sign up for the Morgan Report? Okay, well, you can find me uh, in different places on the Internet. I have a Twitter account, and that's at uh, SilverGuru22. I have a YouTube account, which I do a lot of videos, and that is SilverGuru. And the main website is called TheMorganReport.com. It's all one word, TheMorganReport.com. And lastly, for those that are interested in kind of getting an overview of what we do, there is a site called silverspeculator.com. And if you go to silverspeculator.com, it's a landing page. It's just a page, but it describes what the Morgan Report is, how to sign up for it, how to get on our free email list, uh, some opportunities to market on the Internet, gold and silver if you are Internet-based and you know what you're doing on the web. So it's kind of a catch-all place. It's uh, kind of free and for fun, but silverspeculator.com is a landing page we just uh, put up on the web recently. Great. So this has been Kirsty Hogg with Gold Wars uh, speaking to David Morgan of the Morgan Report. 
Thanks very much, David. It's been an absolute pleasure. My pleasure is all mine, Christy. Thank you. Thank you.